In this video, we're going to start looking at radian measures. Whenever we've done work with angles before, we've always measured them in degrees. So for example, if we had a right angle triangle, one of the angles might be 30 degrees. That's an example of an acute angle measured in degrees. We might have a different triangle, we might have an obtuse angle, and that might be 120 degrees. Radians are an alternative way of measuring angles. Often radians are a more appropriate way of measuring angles. So for example, if we're doing any work with calculus involving angles, we will always measure them in radians. In this video, we're going to look at finding the size of an angle in radians. We're also going to look at converting from radians to degrees and degrees to radians. And then we will look at arc lengths and areas of sectors. What I want to do is start off with a circle. So if we have a circle now, I'm going to say that it has a radius and the radius has length r. So if I put r here, I've got r just there. So let's go ahead now and label this up. We have r, we have r, and then I'm going to have a subtended angle, and I'm going to call that angle theta. I'm now going to consider this arc length. That arc length I'm going to define to be l. Remember, the arc is simply now a portion of the circumference of a circle. If we have this angle theta and it's measured in radians, we say it's defined to be the ratio of the length of the arc divided by the radius. So we can say that theta is going to be equal to L over R. This gives us now the definition of the angle measured in radians. What I'm going to do at this stage is take L to be equal to R. So if we have this case, theta will be equal to R over R, which gives me theta is going to be equal to 1, or more precisely, 1 radian. The notation we use is a little c. So if we consider this now, if we have a circle with radius r and arc length r, the angle subtended is going to be 1 radian. What I want to do is get some idea of the magnitude now of this. I'm going to draw another circle, and we're going to consider the circumference of a circle. So in this case, L is a small portion of the circumference. We know that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So what I'm going to do is just draw this up. So this time now we have a radius, and we will say that this is going to be r. This time now we have an angle, and this angle theta is going to be 360 degrees. We know one complete revolution is 360 degrees. Now L, in this particular case, is going to be 2 pi r. So if we consider now this angle here, theta, theta, when we're working in radians, is defined to be now the ratio of the arc length, which in this case is 2 pi r, divided by the radius. So we get 2 pi r divided by r, which gives us now that theta in this particular case is going to be 2 pi radians. Now if we consider this angle here, we know that's 360 degrees. So let's go ahead and make some conversions from radians to degrees, given that. So we know then that 2 pi radians will be equal to 360 degrees. Therefore, I can say that pi radians is going to be 180 degrees. When we're talking about now 1 radian, and we would write this as 1c, of course we could put c on these, this is going to be approximately equal to 57.3 degrees. So this gives us some idea now of what we have. 2 pi radians is going to be 360 degrees, pi radians is going to be now 180 degrees, and 1 radian is approximately 57.3 degrees. What we can do is convert from radians to degrees and degrees to radians. So if we look at some examples now, I might have 100, let's say I've got 120 degrees, and I want to now convert this from degrees to radians. All I would do is multiply it by pi over 180. So if I want to convert now from degrees to radians manually, all I would do is multiply, and I'll write it here, multiply by pi over 180. So if we consider what we're going to have, this is going to break down, and we can divide both of these by 60. So if we divide both by 60, we're going to end up now with 2 pi by 3. And we read it as 2 pi by 3. You can say 2 thirds pi. Generally, though, 2 pi by 3. So if we look now at 45 degrees, if we multiply this now by pi divided by 180, we can see now that 45 goes into 180 
4 times, so this is pi by 4 radians. These now are some of our special angles, and we're going to look at these shortly. So if we now look and say, let's say we had 30 degrees. Well, if I multiply this by pi over 180, 30 goes into 180 six times, so this would be pi by 6. And this is an angle that you'll become quite familiar with. So let's go the other way. Let's now convert from radians to degrees. So we're using quite nice values. Of course, when we think about the magnitude of pi, pi is 3.14, 159, and so on and so forth. So of course, we could have some messy answers. These are quite nice um, exact values, if you like. Um, but do appreciate that this can be done when we don't have these multiples of pi. So for example, we might have 1.27 radians, and we could convert that to degrees. So if we're going now from radians to degrees, we would multiply by 180 over pi. Essentially, we're looking for the pi's to cancel off. So let's say I had now pi by 3 radians, and I wanted to convert this to degrees. All I would do is multiply by 180 over pi. The pi's cancel. 180 over 3 gives me 60 degrees. If I wanted to do now 3 pi, uh, let's write that there, 3 pi by 4, well, I'd multiply this now by 180 over pi. If I do 3 quarters of 180, that's going to give me 135 degrees. So this now gives us an example of, uh, examples of converting now from radians to degrees and degrees to radians, and that's done manually. You can, of course, now do this in a calculator with these values that aren't now exact values. When we're talking about exact values, we're talking about now multiples of pi. So an exact value now isn't a decimal answer. So if we just go back now to our circle here, let's say we had now an arc length. Let's say this was equal to 2.1 centimetres, and the radius now was going to be 3 centimetres. All we would do to find the value of theta in radians is take 2.1, so we'd say theta is going to be equal to 2.1 divided now by 3. So of course we could do that in a calculator, or you could do it in your head if you like, and this will give you the size of the angle in radians. So 2.1 divided by 3 is going to give us now 7 tenths, or 0 0.7. So we'd say that theta is going to be equal to 0 0.7 radians, and that now is the size of the angle. Okay, so that gives us some idea. So we can convert from degrees to radians, radians to degrees, and we've got now some understanding of what a radian is and how we measure angles in radians. What we're now going to look at is the arc length. So here I've got L, and we want to have that now measured in radians. So when you're doing some work, you will be, or some work with these arcs or sectors, you'll be expected to find now the arc length given that the angle is in radians. Now, if we look at this right here, we can see that theta is equal to L over R. Therefore, the arc length, when the, the uh, angle is measured in radians, is defined to be R theta. It's that straightforward. Now, if you wanted a, a sort of um, a more intuitive way of looking at this, let's go ahead now and draw up a circle. So let's just do this now. Let's go ahead and put on some values. We'll put some values on shortly. Essentially, what we're doing now is looking at a part of the circumference of a circle. So let's say we have now some angle just here, theta. Now, we know that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So if I want the length now, all this is going to be is some part of now the circle. So what we're going to have then is theta divided by 2 pi. So if we have theta divided by 2 pi, that gives me the size of the angle relative now to one complete revolution. We know that this is now 2 pi. So if we consider what we're going to have here, we can see that the 2 pi's are going to cancel, and we can say that the arc length, when the angle is measured in radians, is going to be r theta. So let's look at an example of that. Let's say we've got now a circle, and I'll just uh, draw one up. We'll look at finding now, and of course you can work this backwards and find missing angles in the same way that you did with degrees. So let's say we have now an angle, and I'll put on an angle, and we'll have an angle of pi by 6. Pi by 6 is going to be 30 degrees. So let's look at this now as pi by 6, and we're going to have now a length right here. Let's say this is going to be 4 centimetres. 
What we want now is this length here. So we want now the arc length, which I'm going to define to be L. Well, L is simply equal to R theta. It's now the radius multiplied now by the angle when the angle is measured in radians. So L is going to be equal to 4, and then we're going to have pi by 6. So this gives us now L is equal to 2 pi by 3. If we just uh, simplify that, and that will be in centimetres. And again, we could get a numeric answer. Now, if you'd done this in degrees, and this was 30 degrees, you would have said, well, that's going to be 30 of 360 multiplied by 2 pi r. And we know that r in this particular case is going to be 4. So that's how you would have worked it out in degrees. You would have said, I've got 30 of 360 multiplied by the circumference of a circle. Now, if we look at this here, what do we end up with? Well, that's going to be 1 12th. So we're going to have 8 twelfths, which is going to be 2 thirds pi. So we can see we're going to have exactly the same value. And again, if you wanted a decimal answer, you would simply plug that into the calculator. So that's finding an arc length when we have the angle measured in radians. Let's go ahead now and look at the area of a sector. So again, if we just grab up a circle, let's do a circle now we're going to have a sector. So we've seen that a sector is simply now part of a circle cut off by the radii. So let's put one here, and this is going to be, let's say this is our radius, and this is our radius. So what we want then is the area now of a sector, and this is when we're measuring it now in radians. So let's say we've got theta. What we're going to have then is theta over 2 pi. We've now um, established that the 360 degrees is 2 pi. So we have theta, of the, uh, theta over 2 pi multiplied by pi r squared. And this will give us now the area of a sector. So if we just consider now, all this is saying I'm taking now part of a circle and multiplying it by the area of a circle. So we can see now that the, uh, the pi's cancel and we can define the area of a sector when the angle is measured in radians as one half r squared theta. So this now gives us the area of a sector and we simply plug that in. So for example now if we had a circle, let's draw a quick sketch. Let's say we had an angle and we'll put this on. So let's say we had now pi by 4. Pi by 4 is 45 degrees. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's put this angle on. That's going to be pi by 4. And we've got now 5 centimetres. So if we consider what we would do here, we wanted now the area of this sector. So the area is going to be 1 half. Then we're going to have r squared. Well, that's going to be 25 multiplied by theta, which is going to be pi by 4. So this gives us now the area is going to be 25 pi by 8. And we would say that that was going to be, now, if we have this in centimetres, that would be centimetres squared. And that is what we call an exact answer. Now, of course, if you have this in degrees, then all we would do is the area is going to be equal now to 45 of 360 multiplied by pi r squared. And we can see exactly the same answer is going to happen. All we would do is go ahead and cancel down and we would have the same. So that's what we're looking at. So let's just recap what we've seen. We've seen now how to find the angle measured in radians. We've looked at the definition of one radian to be a circle with radius r and arc length r. That gives us one radian. That's approximately 57 degrees. We've looked now at uh, radians relative to degrees. We've looked at converting. And then we've gone ahead and looked at the arc length and now the sector, the area of the sector. What I'm going to do now is just finish off with what we call the unit circle. And we're going to look at some exact values. So in later studies, you will come across the unit circle. I'm going to list this out in degrees. This is going to be zero degrees. Now with this, we work anti-clockwise. This is going to be 90 degrees. This is going to be 180 degrees. This is going to be 270 degrees. And then, of course, we get back to 360 degrees. So when we're using this, this is called the unit circle. Sometimes it's referred to later in your trig studies as the cast diagram. What I'm going to do is put some angles on and the corresponding now radian measure. So this is going to be zero, so zero is just zero. I'm now going to have an angle of 30 degrees. Now if we have 30 degrees, 
we're going to end up now with pi by 6 radians. So if you want to take time and convert that, that is one of our special angles. And as stated later on with our trig, we will see this in action. This is 45 degrees. So if we put this on, we can see now that 45 degrees is here. So writing this out, 45 degrees, that's pi by 4 radians. If we now put on 60 degrees, let's go ahead and do that. And we'll just put these up. 60 degrees is approximately there. And this is going to be pi by 3. So these are the angles that you're going to learn over time. 60 degrees, pi by 3 radians. And again, you might want to put the C on. This is going to give us now pi by 2. So we've got pi by 2. And then, of course, we can do these by symmetry. So another uh, example of a, an angle that we'll come across quite a bit is going to be now 2 pi by 3. 2 pi by 3 is going to now be 120 degrees. So let's put this on 120 degrees, 2 pi by 3. We can look at 3 pi by 4. So let's put that one on. We'll put that. Let's put that one on. That one will go just there. That's going to be 3 pi by 4 or 135 degrees. So you're not expected to just uh, learn these off by heart. You can go ahead and convert them. What is important, though, is that you don't do your workings in degrees and then try and switch back to radians. So, for example, when we come on to trig equations, don't solve it. If it's a, a, an equation in radians, don't solve it in degrees and then plug back because often you're going to be asked for an exact value. And working with radians keeps it there. Converting it back can get messy, especially if you're truncating answers as you go. So we've got 3 pi by 4. We've got now here pi radians. We know 180 is pi radians. If we look at a couple more, um, a couple more, as we go around, we can see these are, are symmetric. We can look down here, and this is going to be 225 degrees. Let's put this on. So 225 degrees, and this is going to be 5 pi by 4 radians. We have 3 pi by 2, and then, of course, if we come back this way, we'll have 7 pi by 4, and so on and so forth. Now, when we're measuring, we can also go now backwards and make these negative. So if I take this one now, I could say that this is going to be 330 degrees. Let's write this out. 330 degrees, or I could say it's minus 30 degrees. If it was now 330 degrees, I'd have 11 pi by 6 radians. Just consider 12 pi is going to be 2 pi. If I take pi by 6 off, I have now 11 pi by 6, or we could say it's minus pi by 6. So these are some of the angles that you'll learn, and it just gives you some understanding of the magnitude relative to degrees. So there we go, brief introduction to radian measures, and lots of our work will involve these. So do get comfortable with them, and in the next few videos we will look at some questions that involve them.